So I get asked a couple of times, what is the best way and the most affordable way to make solar work? Now, if you go for a hybrid with a battery, uh, a hybrid inverter that is grid-tied as well, then you have to meet the you know, uh, registrations, uh, you can be limited, and it is expensive. Now, a hybrid 3 kilowatt inverter may cost you around about £1,200, but you can get a 3 kilowatt inverter for about £400, which is a considerable saving and can go towards that battery cost. So in this one, what we're going to look at is how you do an ATS system. And I've been doing this and explaining this to customers quite a lot because it is quite a popular option. Obviously that money saving uh, really comes in handy. So basically what we have is an automatic transfer switch. And now we have a different graph up on the, on the screen for you. I've got it over here. So your DRO comes in and then you have your high load. Now your high load off that DNO switch goes to a separate uh, consumer unit. So on that consumer unit that you'll see with heavy loads, you'll have your inverter charge circuit, AC charge coupling. These are not connected to the grid, it won't feed back to the grid, it's just a charging system to charge your batteries. From the ATS side then you have uh, the output goes to your main consumer unit that you have already. Um, obviously your cooker um, your electric chair if you've got one and your immersion heater can all go on to the heavy load side with that AC charger. What happens basically is you've got an automatic transfer switch here, you'll power it by your solar. Should your solar go off or be underpowered, the ATS will switch over and you're directly fed to the grid. And that's basically all it is, is a switch between inverter and a switch between the grid. And it isolates the two because these off-grid or grid-attached AC-coupled inverters cannot be attached to the grid and can't have that output going to the grid. So we need a way of stopping that from happening, and that's via the ATS switch. Now, an ATS switch on Amazon may cost you around about £60. You want a 100 amp, one that matches your uh, fuse that you'll find next to your meter. So it's rather simple. You connect in... If I put this here, it would be helpful. So what you do is you connect in your high loads to a single consumer unit. From that it comes out, it will go to the ATS switch. Then from the ATS switch over to the consumer unit and from the ATS switch to the inverter. And there's a little control bar on the converter as a um, auxiliary start switch. Uh, which can be used to control the consumer unit, uh, sorry, the ATS for that feed going into the consumer unit. So nothing really changes. It's a very simple system and it's kind of what's inside a hybrid system anyway. So if you think, you know, if you can get a £400 inverter and a £60, that's £460. It doesn't quite account to the uh, to the £1,200. And, and this is the object I get at is that when they combine these units there is a premium price it is more convenient it is a single point of failure as well however it can lend to giving you a decent support uh, network there because you can parallel the inverters and just connect them into the ATS how you do this is uh, using a Henley block um, to split that load going in before the ATS to your hide load um, consumer unit you're going to probably need something like a five or six way it's a standard unit so it should be configured um, as a normal consumer unit less all the rest of it now you can depending on your inverter that you pick you could run your um, you could run your uh, immersion heater off it uh, and some of you may actually be able to run your cooker off it however it's best to have those checked um, and install correctly as a DIY um, your sub the new high load consumer unit uh, will probably need to be installed by electrician because there are safety issues there um, such as the grid being attached with no isolation to there so you'd need to uh, speak to somebody about having that done uh, the ATS side and the circuits within your home they can be done by yourself However, you need to make sure that you're not changing 
any of those uh, fuses that your lines are capable of uh, producing and providing that power and that your peak usage doesn't exceed that of the inverter. The inverter will switch over either going on pass-through because you can get ones with pass-through or it will switch over at the ATS and you'll be running back off the grid. So like an 8 kilowatt shower on a 5 kilowatt rather than it being like the grid where it would share the load uh, you may find what will happen is that you will um, you'll get a switch off of the inverter um, and go back to grid and then after that resumes you should be able to do it so um, hopefully that comes in handy to somebody there is um, other things that you can put on there as well um, mode bus um, metering um, with controls and also there is other things available on the market to give you some uh, very specific um, settings so basically all you're doing is taking the tails off, putting them in a Henley block, running the tails out to the ATS switch from the ATS um, from the grid side to the consumer unit, then the ATS out to the inverter and the consumer unit. Uh, it's relatively straightforward, there's six connections on a ATS. Um, the grid side, which becomes the solar side um, as a primary, and the secondary would be your grid supply. So don't forget you need to have tails and Henley blocks on there and uh, decent connections and these should all be tested and I do recommend actually uh, placing your own earth rod in as well um, just because you can be isolated entirely from the grid um, although there is a uh, grid bond through the um, AC charger normally or AC input so that would give you your grounding there but it's always worth putting an extra one in uh, just in case there is uh, a fault and there is a bond issue that you will always have your earth. Okay, I hope that helped you. Uh, if you did like the video, don't forget to click like. If you've got any questions, shove them in the comments below. Um, and hopefully we'll speak soon.